This is how I made my web shooter and utility belt for my Nicholas Hammond Spider-Man cosplay. Real quick before we jump into the tutorial, I just wanted to say that they are not at all accurate to the TV movies, nor did I set out for them to be. They were just something that I thought would be nice to have as an option while wearing the suit. Okay, cool. Let's get into it. So for my web shooter and belt, I decided to use small plastic jewelry cases for the web cartridges. In the show, they were custom machine metal boxes. But the big thing for me when going into this was that I wanted those cartridges to be usable. Uh, I wanted to make sure I could store stuff in them like small super glues, uh, Tylenol, maybe cash if I was feeling gutsy, wig glue, things of that nature. Uh, so for me, these were the perfect size and shape. I've seen people use Tic Tac cases for the web cartridges, which obviously works and in some ways better than uh, these jewelry cases, but I just didn't love the shape of them. Plus with how thin they were, I thought it might have made it difficult to make them removable with magnets, uh, which was another big thing um, going into this. I knew I wanted to use magnets because for full colored spandex suits, hook and loop closures, AKA Velcro is an absolute no, no. Nothing will ruin your suit faster, I promise you. So I knew going into this I would absolutely be using magnets to make the web cartridges removable. That being said, for the web shooter I decided to keep the cartridges stationary. They're more or less still functional, but uh, I didn't want to have to worry about them falling off if I jumped or bumped into something, so I decided that I would just glue them down to the strap. Originally I was going to have them removable so I could like swap the cartridges out from belt to wrist and wrist to belt uh, just to like entertain kids but once I got to building I just decided to like I said to keep them stationary because to me it just made more sense. Anyways so next you're going to need some sort of super glue. I decided to use E6000 as it was the only thing that I still had on hand uh, and in true Parker fashion I am absolutely broke. So you can use whatever you prefer. I'd suggest maybe like a liquid gel Loctite as a good substitute, but um, again, it's dealer's choice. Uh, something fast acting is usually what I prefer, but again, whatever works for you. You are also going to need a belt buckle. I used an old Spider-Man one that my dad bought me when I was a teenager, which I just painted silver. It's not exact to the show, but you know, same concept, a Spider-Man head. I think you can find similar ones on eBay for like $20 and they're already silver, so it'll save you a step. But uh, speaking of paint, you'll want a silver one and a sealer. I used a chrome paint by Rust-Oleum and just Mod Podge for the sealer. Uh, if you don't seal it, this paint will rub off. Not a lot, but it does. And I didn't want it rubbing off onto the fingers of the suit. So get yourself a sealer. The next thing you'll be needing is a belt. I got this one off eBay. It's a lot more red uh, than the one that was used on the show, but uh, it was inexpensive. Uh, it was red and it matched my suit. So that's all that really mattered to me. So another major thing you'll be needing is some good neodymium magnets. Uh, I have several left over from when I ordered them months ago and I have them in two sizes. I couldn't give you the exact measurements off the cuff, but the size honestly doesn't matter as long as they're not too big. Uh, I'll be using both these sizes for this project. Uh, you can use hook and closure if you really want to, but uh, again, I wouldn't recommend it. In addition to not wanting to ruin my suit, I just wanted to keep the attachment point of the cartridges low profile, so thin, small magnets uh, were a must for me. I also used Gorilla Glue hot glue, uh, but this is really optional. It was just what I used instead of the ES6 or E6000 in some places, just for the sake of ease, because it, it was quick. Uh, and lastly, you'll need something to use as a strap for your web shooter. I decided to cannibalize one of my ankle pouches for my retired Scarlet Spider suit, uh, mainly because I, I didn't want to destroy a belt or, or something else, but you could use elastic or a thin leather. Honestly, anything with some give would probably work better. Uh, because I used foam, I was unable to attach as many cartridges to it as physically possible since once the strap was undone, uh, it'd want to straighten out and therefore uh, force any attached pieces into each other, uh, which I didn't think would be good for the longevity of the web shooter. Uh, I don't know, but uh, plus with the supplies that I had on hand, I really couldn't have done it any other way. So um, 
yeah, like I said, if I had wanted to attach more web cartridges, the strap would have had to remain coiled. And since the E6000 has a bit of a drying time, I, there was no way to attach more web cartridges than what I did end up attaching, if all that makes any sense. But yeah, with all that stuff out of the way, let's finally get started uh, building. Or this is this is how I did it. This is this is how I built it. Them. This is how I built them. I decided to start with the belt as it was going to be the simplest. The first thing I did was test fit the belt um, so I could see where I could start the row of cartridges because naturally there was going to be a portion of the belt uh, that overlapped the other. So once I figured that out, I laid the belt on my desk and marked out where that first cartridge would attach. And then um, I just kind of situated it how I liked it. And then to the best of my memory, mark to the center point uh, on the belt, uh, as this would be where I would attach the first of many magnets. After that, I got one box sort of done and ready to go. Uh, so that way I could test the durability and use it to measure where the next cartridge uh, would go, uh, which was just putting a second one next to it and then measuring the distance between the center point uh, of each. And then after that, it was just marking my way down the belt. I also just wanted to note real quick, um, because I marked out where the web cartridges would go while the belt was flat, um, it was kind of the same issue as I had with the web shooter where basically the belt said I could only accommodate this many cartridges, but then once you're wearing it and it coils, there becomes more gaps and more space where you might be able to squeeze one in. Uh, in the case of the belt, not as much. Um, everything was pretty evenly spaced and there really wasn't enough room uh, unless I did really some finagling. But like I said, with the materials I had on hand, there wouldn't have been a way really to to do it any other way maybe. I don't know. I just, it, this is how it turned out. Like I said, it's not a seamless look like in the show. Um, and if you are smarter than me, you maybe could get it to look the seamless way with, with with the materials I had. Anyways, all right. So after marking out the spots for the magnets, I just went ahead and began attaching them with the E6000. It's pretty easy, uh, though I did mess up the polarity of one, uh, which I just I guess wanted to note, uh, be careful of your polarities because if you don't do it right, then you're gonna have an issue of certain cartridges only being able to connect to certain spots and it's just gonna be a pain in your keister when you're you know, messing around, swapping them. So uh, be mindful of what side of the magnet you're gluing down. Thankfully, I only did mess up one, but this also got way more complicated down the line once I started adding an additional two magnets, uh, keeping the polarity straight and everything. Just, it, it's a lot. So, you know, maybe even mark your magnets with a, like a, a pen or something, like an ink pen, not an ink pen, but you know what I mean, like a paint pen or some, something. Once you finish that, you can move on to gluing down magnets uh, onto the inside of your boxes. You could glue them to the outside, uh, which would make for a stronger hold. Uh, and thusly, you'd probably only you'd probably could get away with using less magnets uh, than I did. But again, I wanted the attachment point to be as low profile as possible. So attaching them on the inside of the jewelry cases was a must. That it, it had to be done. I tried. A couple different ways of attaching the magnets on the inside but ultimately my favorite way ended up just being to layer hot glue over the magnets um, and it holds pretty freaking good so you know sometimes less is more after all your cartridges have been outfitted with magnets it's time for paint uh, like I said before I used a chrome rust-oleum uh, I decided to also paint a spare web cartridge from my web suit that could act as like a sort of nozzle for the web shooter I wasn't sure if I'd end up using it or not, but I just wanted the option uh, just in case. So after I painted those, I gave them probably about 30 minutes to, to dry. It was a really cold day, so they did dry super quick. And then after that, I spritzed them with some of the uh, Mod Podge and then gave it probably about an hour to dry. And then after that, uh, it was time to put the web shooter together. Honestly, this was 
pretty simple. The hardest part was just making the closure work. Uh, when you attach these neodymium magnets to foam, you really gotta be careful because they're so strong that if you don't attach them and sort of reinforce them properly, they'll just rip off. Um, I found this little perfect divot in the strapping to glue one magnet down. And then on the underside of the other end of the magnet, I created an indentation and uh, glued the other piece that would uh, overlap. And then just to add some stability and make sure that magnets didn't sort of rip out of the foam, I took just some of this spare vinyl I had and just glued it over the top. And that has kept it from, that, that it worked, voila. Next I cobbled together the nozzle portion, which involved plugging the hole at the bottom and then gluing uh, a lighter in place. I considered making the lighter removable like my web ones uh, are, but it honestly just didn't seem like there was a real reason to do that. So um, yeah, there you go. The added weight of the web cartridge though, uh, or the, the nozzle portion did sort of end up making it so that the closure of the web shooter wasn't sort of perfectly flush, but um, it kind of is what it is. I figured if I really wanted to, I could fix it later. So, you know, live and learn as Crush40 says. Once that was good and stuck on, I laid out the strap and just went to town gluing the last three cartridges on. Like I'd mentioned earlier, in theory, I could have added a fourth and had it be one seamless looking band but I just wasn't sure if that'd cause issues later on because like I said, it was foam, so it was kind of rigid. So I just kind of assumed it, it, once it was uncoiled, those cartridges would be smashing into each other. And I just, I just wasn't sure that that would work out well in the long run. So I don't know, like I said, if I could have kept the thing coiled, in theory, I could have done it, but with the materials that I had, it just, it, it wasn't gonna work, so. This is how it went. Um, I do have another strap though, so if I really want to, I could remake it somewhere down the line, but uh, it, it is what it is for now. So the last thing I had to do now was add some padding to the back of my belt so that it would fit snug. I did order this belt um, that to fit my waist, but uh, it didn't. So there wasn't really any choice for me other than to add some padding. Luckily, I have plenty of foam, so I just cut that out to length, um, allowing room for that uh, overlapping piece, and then I hot glued that sucker in place, and uh, she was good to go, or so I thought. When I went to do the test fitting, I discovered that the magnets I had attached just weren't strong enough, um, so the web cartridges would swivel and sort of sit at weird angles, so I had to go back and attach two more magnets. And this took a bit of futzing and putzing and kind of trying to decide how I wanted to do it and what was sort of the most time effective way. Ultimately, I decided that I would have to add one larger magnet on the inside and then one smaller magnet um, back onto the belt. So. It, Essentially, it would be two small magnets on the belt, one small magnet in the cartridge, and one large magnet in the cartridge. And that would allow them to remain vertical and not swivel and, you know, just stay put. Also, in hindsight, I don't know why I didn't plan on this in the first place, since with just the two small magnets holding it in place, I couldn't have stored anything in it anyways. They were so kind of faintly on there. So I don't know why I ever thought that was a good idea. So it was a little tricky adding these additional magnets. Ultimately what I had to do was have the large magnet connected to the small magnet and then uh, very carefully putting E6000 on the small magnet while it remained um, connected to the jewel case through magnetism and then press it down into place onto the belt with the aid of the already connected uh, smaller magnets, um, if that makes sense. Hopefully this video footage kind of helps. So basically used the smaller already attached magnets 
to to get the boxes in place but because of how the close proximity um, that the magnets were going to be together the big and small ones already had to be pulling uh, together so yeah um, and then you know it was just lining them all up and then giving those some time to dry then once the small magnets were dried to the belt it was opening all the cartridges back up because I had to close them to get them to really you know lay out nice so then I had to go back open all the cartridges back up and like I did before I went and just put hot glue over all the large magnets to ensure that they would stay in place and with that my accessories are officially done and my Nicholas Hammond suit was now officially completed. Like I said before, these accessories weren't meant to be TV movie accurate. Uh, they were first and foremost just meant to be functional, or at least the utility belt was. Uh, and in that regard, it, it does do that. And it does look fantastic. There's not huge gaps between the um, web cartridges. They're all evenly spaced. They all remain upright, or at least for the most part, they are, you know, vertical. Um, they're easily detachable. They easily snap back into place. They have enough strength that they should be able to hold small um, objects. I didn't really test that, but I'm going to I'm, I'm assume that they're going to work. Um, the web shooter itself is all right. Uh, like I said, the, the wrist strap isn't quite have the perfect flush uh, closure you can kind of see you know the white of the foam peeking out but um, you know it's just, it's just not a huge enough deal uh, for me to be worried about it like I said in the future I can go ahead and make a version 2 if I really want to but since these accessories are just meant to be something fun and extra to just add to the look um, I'm, I'm really not concerned about it like I said they, they were never going to be perfectly accurate so with that, this suit is finally done and dusted, and uh, I'm super excited to get to wear it to con. If you enjoyed this tutorial or found it helpful, leave a comment down below. Or hey, let me know how you would have gone about doing this. Uh, I intend to put together a couple more uh, tutorials this year as I'm planning on trying some new costuming techniques like uh, seamless soles, and even for the first time ever, I'm going to try and sew my own suit together. Uh, so lots of stuff coming down the pipeline like suit reviews and you know comparisons and all sorts of stuff the usual So if any of that sounds interesting to you, maybe uh, hit that subscribe button. I Guess that supposedly helps with the algorithm, but uh, it's all for now true believers, and I will catch you in the next video